Welcome to Cape Town. We just hiked to the top of Lion's Head, which is like a 40 minute hike. And we're here for sunrise. And hopefully we can get some cool photos. Cape Town is known for its amazing skyline, which isn't skyscrapers, but mountains. And the clouds are just rolling off right now. We've got a beautiful glow going, full moon fading out and a sunrise rising behind me. So with a bit of luck, we'll get some good shots. But first, sit down and enjoy the view for a bit. It is. Golden light for breakfast. All right, let's get shooting. I'm gonna try and get like a silhouette blocking shot, probably quite high key. And it's really important to get a good foreground here and not just show the view. So I'm shooting wide so I can get a lot of stuff in the foreground and show the big picture at the same time. And I also want to get this beautiful green in front of me. It's glowing golden right now, so we'll get that as a foreground. I'll move a bit left and right and see what I can get um, going a bit lower or higher. Uh, with a wide angle lens, it's so important to change perspective and just one step to the left or the right can really change everything. So it's all about finding the right spot to get the shot. So we're shooting with the 7 to 14 millimeter F2.8 Pro and the EM1 Mark II. Now what's awesome with a wide angle lens if I put the sun in a corner, I can get a beautiful flare. Sometimes you hate it, sometimes you love it. Uh, in a morning shot, just, just to add a little extra into the shot, I actually quite like it. So I'm gonna be shooting at a really low aperture, so f2.8 with this lens, and that gives me a huge, huge um, flare. The smaller the aperture, the smaller the flare, and it just becomes these dots in the shot. Let me show you. See the difference? So it's really important to get the right aperture, a nice big aperture to get a big circle. It's not like disturbing, but actually adds to the image. Now let's find the right foreground and we'll probably get the model to stand up and then maybe we can do some blocking shots and get some nice um, glowing around the edge of the model, use a rim light or um, we can get some of the star bursting if we can just get it coming out and left on the right. So it's been a pretty good sunrise. It still is really. So we're gonna head a bit further down and there is a cave and just above the cave there's a good spot too, I think. So we're gonna go explore that and hopefully get some cool shots with using the dark background on this side of the mountain here and the bright side on that we can get a really nice, uh, we can get a really nice rim light. So hopefully that works out. Cool, so we've come a little bit further down and now we're a bit further around as well. So the sun is like on our left and the shadow is on our right. Now if you come the right amount around the mountain, on one side you can, we got the person standing and we have this beautiful rim light. And on the other side, like in the background of the person, we got this beautiful shadow area. So we have this nice definition. Um, and we've got Table Mountain and the cable cars going up and down right in front of us. So it's really perfect to get some cool shot with a person here and it's a bit of like an adventurous hiking shot. Um, shooting the 7-14 to again and EM1 Mark II and 
So there's no flares here anymore because I don't have the sun in the shot. So I'll actually be shooting at a higher aperture, something like f11 or some whatever the, the light permits. Alright, we got the good shot, now we're going to head further down and there's a sort of a cave, like a bit of a cutout in the mountain and we can frame Table Mountain with that. So, let's go. Cool, we just got to the cave and I will show you how we can frame an awesome landscape shot of a mountain with a similar shaped cave and um, we'll add a person or a silhouette of a person in it to add a bit of interest. It's all about finding the balance between how much of the framing do you want to use to block the shot and actually frame the shot and finding how far back you can get and zoom back in. That changes completely what the image will look like. And I will show you what I mean. If I stand further forward and have a use a really wide angle lens, then I can get a lot of landscape in the shot. And the further back I get and the more I zoom in to frame the shot, the fewer landscape I'll actually see. So I, will, I can actually focus this whole cave shot on something more specific or I can show the bigger landscape. So um, in both cases I'll be using the 7-14 to to actually capture the whole cave and um, the EM1 Mark II. Alright, that was it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you had half as much fun as I had walking up this mountain twice now in two days. Thanks to Lauren for showing me all these amazing pl amazing places yesterday. Uh, we had a bit of a scouting mission. We found the tunnel, oh, the tunnel, the cave, and some other cool spots. And it really helped me today to create a more fluid episode. But unfortunately, yesterday the weather was way more dramatic and interesting. So I'm gonna blend in some shots that I got yesterday. Um, same locations, but you'll see what the weather can really make such a big difference so it's always about coming back to the same places again if you're not happy with your shot just come back and if you really enjoyed this episode check out my Lightroom preset packs if you're a photographer and you want to speed up your editing workflow I suggest checking those out they um, are not that expensive and they really help me produce these episodes and travel and spend all this time making videos and thinking of new episodes and things to talk about and share about with you guys so if you have any feedback or ideas or suggestions or places locations you want me to explore let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up uh, and check out the blog post as well I always try to put some extra information there and until then well next week there'll be a new episode hopefully something more in Cape Town I might do something climbing up to Table Mountain which is a bit more of a climb uh, until then, keep shooting, and I'll see you next week. This here is what they call the tablecloth as it comes over the Table Mountain. And the clouds just constantly move. It's really beautiful, really nice for time lapse. Um, and if the sun's like low and hanging in there, then you can get really cool variations in a really short amount of time. So it's, it's really exciting for photography and videography.